Phil, this uh, McConnell's do nothing strategy, this is not the first time we've seen him do this. Has it worked for him in the past? Yeah, I mean, I think that one of the things that McConnell and his party have going for them, and people will remember that Trump had no second term agenda when he was running in 2020, nor did the Republican Party, which basically just said whatever Trump wants to do, which was, which was their policy platform. But it's easier for Republicans to do that because Republicans are the party that is centered on not having government do things. And so they are they are enabled in that by being the party that is that can say, no, we don't want to do that. Right. And so it's always easier to do nothing than it is to do something. And so Mitch McConnell understands that if he gets out ahead of this and refuses to outline any sort of policy agenda, then he can't be held accountable to it. You know, it's the same reason that a lot of people find new candidates appealing. They don't have a background that they can be judged on. If you don't put together a policy platform, if you don't say what it is you're going to do, no one's going to vote against you because of it. And because the Republican Party is so heavily focused on culture war stuff, it actually seems like it might work. And I do want to come back to that culture wars question, because that's what ends up taking up a lot of the oxygen in the room. But Juanita, before we do that, I, I want to ask you then, if Republicans are avowedly running on nothing, what then does that mean for Democrats and their message? I think Democrats are going to try to come out and highlight that Republicans are running on nothing, highlight how far Republicans have gone to making fringe the mainstream and emphasize their plan for the country because there's still a lot of work to be done. I think that uh, Philip hit the nail on the head about accountability because that's what we do see right now that Democrats are being um, getting hit with in every poll that shows low approvals for the president and every poll that recognizes that the Democrats haven't made a lot of progress on their legislative agenda. But the other thing that I think Democrats can emphasize is what the GOP has already said they will do. McCarthy and others have already gone on record saying that the next Congress, if they have control, will be about revenge with unfounded uh, impeachment proceedings, unfounded investigations into folks like Dr. Fauci, um, threats to remove Democrats from committee positions, and the chaos that follows. I think that's something that Democrats can absolutely lift up to emphasize that while Democrats are working to get something done, Republicans will just create an environment of chaos and gridlock. I mean, Elena, Juanita makes an interesting point there, which is they may not have a policy agenda that they are clear or that they are televising per se, but that is not to say that they haven't told us exactly how they plan to govern should they take back power. That's exactly right, Alicia. And, you know, just going back to Mitch McConnell, I mean, he and my colleague Jonathan Swan and I reported this um, last year uh, in November, McConnell was at a donor dinner um, with a lot of Republican donors, some other Republican senators, and made this clear. One donor asked him, OK, sure, you want to run against what Democrats are doing and against the Biden administration. But what about what we're going to run? And, and he said, this has worked for us in the past. It's worked for us in 2014 when McConnell helped to lead Republicans back to taking the majority. And he thought it would work again. And we're seeing that he McConnell and, and people close to him who I've spoken with say that they think it's a distraction to have to outline this policy that they will run on. Instead, he thinks it's the up to the 2024 president nominee or Republican nominee uh, to, to set out that agenda. And to be honest, they're, they're doing a good job so far. I mean, the Biden's approval rating right now is sagging with inflation, the pandemic. And these are things that Democrats and, and Democratic strategists acknowledge as well. They're hoping they can make back some of those gains before the midterms. And so Republicans, and particularly Mitch McConnell and Republican leadership on the Senate side, think that they should just go in on all of that and continue to rail against Democrats in the areas that they've laid out, including inflation, the border, crime. Those are the things that they're just going to continue to hammer in their messaging ahead of the midterms. Okay, so Philip, part of, let me just make sure I'm understanding this all correctly. They're going to largely go after problems that don't exist. They're going to offer no real policy vision of their own. They're going to get really worked up about things like Minnie Mouse's new outfit. And then you add on top of that, you're going to have the former president doing what he did last night, where he says things like, I'm going to pardon the January 6th insurrectionists if I get back into office. I understand that play as a play that potentially turns out their base. Does that play appeal to anyone else? 
Uh, it's a it's a very good question, I, but I think the the, re, the rejoinder to that is another question, which is, do they need to worry about anyone else? This is going to be a midterm election in which, at this moment in time, what past trends tell us is the Democrats are in a lot of trouble. I mean, they've got an uphill fight anyway, just based on the fact this is the first midterm election of a new presidency, which tends to go against the president's party. We have a president who does not have high approval ratings. We have a lot of other indicators, a lot of retirements, redistricting is pushing a lot of people out of office, so they have fewer incumbents. Or all these ways in which the Democrats are already disadvantaged. Uh, and so the Republicans are poised to uh, to benefit from that. I mean, do, do, are they going to pick up a lot of, you know, moderate suburban voters? They might pick up some moderate suburban voters who are irritated with President Biden. Yes. I mean, I, I think that one of the things that we've seen, I spoke with a Republican consultant, very smart guy, who made a very good point, which is that, yes, it would be beneficial if the government, if, you know, if candidates went out and talked to voters about bread and butter issues, but that's not going to move people as much as talking about culture war stuff. And that's why the Republicans don't do it. That's why Republicans win, is because they talk about these things that inflame passions and get people irritated. It turns out their base, and it doesn't turn off a lot of other voters. And the result is the Republicans are able to be successful in places where you might not expect it.